Hi, I'm Justin from Hollard Insurance. With me, I have Pilani. He's one of our risk improvement specialists from Hollard. Uh, Pilani spent some time with his team, Risk Must Fall. I'm interested in just the overall team dynamic and how you found the team. Um, to me, it seemed that Chris had quite a strong technical under understanding. Um, he seemed to be taking the lead in that. Um, Karabor was doing a lot of good coordinating and questioning. Andre seemed a little bit quiet to start. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, Chris uh, was taking more of a leading role and he seemed to be very technically aware as compared to the three. Karabo was playing more of a leading role and Andrew was a little bit quiet at the beginning, but as we moved on with the survey, he seemed to be getting more comfortable as well. Andre played a nice role for me. For me in the, in the survey, he was very quiet and, and didn't seem to contribute as much. But when we, they were putting to the, the, the reports together, I found him to be a great sounding board to the team. And I found him to always be practical. Yes, I think that uh, during the survey, he was a little bit uh, too worried about not missing out to things. And uh, then during uh, the compilation of the report, he was very comfortable and very good. One of the things that, that I seem to notice about the team in the, in the beginning, there wasn't a strong enough and clear leader. On that one, Justin, I will agree with you that uh, they just ran all over the show and they were not going together. Do you think that's the teamwork or do you think they were just confused with the, with the task? Uh, they were overwhelmed with what they were supposed to do. I think that they were a little bit scared. And, uh, but what I liked is that whoever was picking something that was unusual uh, was sharing with everybody. Uh, we also know we, we hit a few naughty tricks in the risk and, and we doctored the risk a bit. Do you have a gut feel of, of what they picked up or what they missed? One of the uh, things that they missed was the um, smoking policy. Uh, they, they were too reliant on, on the response of the owner. It's a tough call, this. Um, is there any one winner or leader in this team that, that, you, that you would pick out? Yes, uh, Chris uh, seems to be an all-rounder. Uh, he has got uh, good communication skills. He can lead. Andrew seems to be not uh, strong in terms of leading. Garabo is good in leading and uh, technical. He rely more on asking questions. You've been very nice about all of them, and I think they're all good candidates. If I had to push you to pick, pick a winner? As I said, that uh, for now, uh, Chris uh, is an all-rounder, so that means that he's the best among the three. Come inside. Good afternoon, team. Good afternoon. I would like uh, to welcome uh, the risk consultants from Hollard. Welcome, Polani. Thank you. Welcome, Roger. Thank you. The first matter to be dealt with, of course, is your name that you've chosen. Can we please hear what it is? Our team name is hashtag risk must fall. Thank you very much. As usual, the presentation will take the form of a five minute uh, executive summary. That will be followed by a 15-minute presentation. So without further ado, over to you for the executive summary. Okay, for today's task, uh, we visited the premises of Justin X Brand Solutions. Within the summary, we will highlight the major risks observed, and together with, with this, our risk improvement recommendations and requirements. The first section I'd like to deal with is the fire section. Uh, we noted that there was no sprinklers, fire alarm or fire smoke detection. We further noted that the fire extinguishers were out of service and the fire hydrant as well as the fire extinguisher downstairs was obstructed. Andre, I'm going to stop you here. We do not want to hear this as part of the executive summary. All we'd like to know is a high level summary of what you're going to present to us. We don't want the presentation now. I'm going to start from the top. Just to touch briefly, briefly on the, the fire section and, and, and the, 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 the what we noticed at the at the premises was that there was no that there were no sprinklers. Uh, some of the fire the, the fire extinguishers, the services were at the day. The staff weren't really trained to, to use the fire equipment, and uh, we couldn't we, we couldn't find any evacuation plan that was that was noticed you know with, within the premises. Uh, the fifth risk briefly was that we were quite happy with the security arrangements in and around the business. Um, from a business interruption point of view, we noticed that the insured as depends on three printers. Um, from the electronic equipment side, we, we noticed that there's no search protection on the distribution board and that concludes our executive summary. 
the risk itself is, is constructed of uh, brick, brick walls and an IBR roof sheeting. In terms of the fire protection, we noted that there were no there were no sprinklers. Uh, there was no sprinklers in the building. Our recommendation there would would be that. Uh, the property owners be notified of this. There were two fire extinguishers in the building and they were both out of service. They are welding works that are performed in the business and we, we strongly recommend that the client uses protective gear in this process. We also noted that uh, despite the, the, the insured telling us that there is no smoking permitted in the building, there, was, there wasn't a no smoking sign in the building and we also found inside the building cigarette buds in, a, in, a, in an ashtray. We, we strongly recommend here that there be a no smoking sign and, and a, a, a zero tolerance to smoking in the building as this poses a very high uh, fire risk. Briefly going to run through the security that the client has at the premises and then we'll discuss the re uh, recommendations and requirements thereafter. The industrial office park is guarded by uh, Palisade fencing, fencing with electric fence electric fence is at 2.4 meters. They have two security guards as well as a patrol team that has a 24 hour um, connection with the um, guard patrol room. I'd just like to move along to another section now that uh, we looked at which is business interruption. We uh, break it down into a, a business interruption loss following a fire and we perceive this to be 100% uh, MPL. This is due to the fact that it's an open plan type environment and we perceive that everything will be lost. Uh, indemnity period, we worked out about six months. A key aspect of business interruption is actually you know, minimizing the loss and reducing the indemnity period. Yeah. Um, could you tell us a bit about the client's contingency plan and what he had in place? Yeah. The client has three um, printers that obviously the heart and soul of the business We obviously gains most of his income. Should there be a, a critical spare that's needed, the lead time for that is four to six hours. Great in terms of the machines, very good. Yeah. In terms of the, if there's a fire in the premises. There's another supplier that um, our client deals with. He has an arrangement currently that should there be any issues, he's able to do to a maximum of 60% of his productivity at the other supplier's premises. You made mention, Karabo, of the cigarette, but you never picked up the cigarette in my presence. And I was going around with you. On the floor, there were three cigarette parts. On the first floor, in the middle, right next to the two generators, there was another cigarette part. Yes. Right by the trailer, the, the trailer there, there was another cigarette part. Correct. But you make mention of a cigarette part in the, in the ashtray. I can assure you now that this is not true. It's not a true reflection of what you picked up there. Gentlemen, the most important thing is for, to, for you to understand the objective of the survey. So if you talk of welding and you, you, you just say that they should be using uh, PPE, which is your personal protective equipment, and uh, does that eliminate the fire risk? So the answer is no. So you, you should understand the objective of your survey so that your recommendations are in line with what you are trying to achieve. You, you noted all the points, but you come to where you looks like your report is more a life safety report yeah. than an asset and structure protection report. All that remains for me is to, to thank both of you, Polani and Roger, for all your trouble uh, and for your assistance. Apprentices, you excuse. The team that that, that I was in today is a fairly technical team. I believed from the onset when we received the task that we stood a very good chance of winning. We, we worked very well together. We had a clear strategy to be as observant, assertive as possible. Uh, we definitely took our time and we made sure that we leave no stone unturned. I think we, we really put in a lot of research and, and everyone contributed you know, 120% to making sure that we win this challenge. On my side, one thing that I, I certainly got heavily involved in was ensuring that um, all, the, all, the, all the clues and guides that we had from the pamphlets that we had in our task sheets, uh, that we, we somehow found a way to include them in our report as a part of um, innovative ways that we can assist the client in managing the risk. I think at this stage of the competition, uh, I, I believe that I am probably in the top three to win the challenge. I can, I can only 
wait until tomorrow to see what the final task is because uh, with each task it brings out different challenges, it brings out different uh, traits, characteristics, strengths and it can also expose some weaknesses that could compromise uh, my race in this, in this competition. So at this stage with today's task I can certainly see myself in the top three. However, I'll have to wait for tomorrow before I can, I can see with certainty how far I am in this competition. The two other competitors that I see as, uh, as those who could possibly uh, win the competition is Unati and Chris. So with regards to the task, we, uh, we were on point with what we had to do. With regards to the uh, executive summary, uh, I was hoping that the guys would shorten it. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, we didn't have enough time to do that. And we asked Andre to perhaps just please cut out a lot because we thought it was a bit long. In my report, we, it's clearly stated, uh, cigarette butt noted inside. The reason we didn't have a photo was that we didn't want to make the uh, report too long. And also, we didn't pick up the exact uh, butts that were picked up upstairs. I'm still on track to win. I've lost a little bit of ground um, with one or two things. Uh, I want to work on one or two things because I have to put in a massive performance tomorrow. Um, I have spoken to the rest of the guys. I've positioned myself because you've got you to first know where you are before you know where you're going. I think I've played this game well. It's, there's a couple of people playing games. I've picked it up. I know they are. I'm watching you. Alicia is pretty good at what she does. And um, I was impressed with Karabu today. Karabu, Alicia, I'm coming for you. It's, it's difficult to say, to say who's the weakest player, but in terms of, I believe that's furthest away from winning Insurance Apprentice 2016 right now. Probably Selena, she's so sweet. Um, she needs that fastiness and that she needs strength. Um, I think Andre also did himself a, a few disfavors and lost round or two. With task four in the presentation today and, and what we actually, what we presented as our, as our serve report, I think we were very comprehensive. We produced a report that, that covered uh, possibly even, I think we went, we went the extra mile with our report and, and, and I think that was, that was quite good and, and I think that's expected of a surveyor. We may not be, have been that great at, at summarizing you know, that, the, the, the comprehensive report that, that we prepared. But I mean, I, I don't think we should be, we should be penalized for that because we met the mandate and we went above and beyond in the time that, that was allocated to us. I might have, in the previous task, veered a bit. And, I, and, that, and that's not because I felt that I was uh, intentionally trying to get out of the spotlight or not contribute to the team. I just felt that that's, that's what, that was best for the team at the time. And it's not always important to, to take the limelight. I think today I, I made... I made quite a quite a big improvement, and and I came and I came back into my own quite a bit. So I think yes, I'm I'm still on track, very much on track to where I'd like to be. If you had to ask me who, who my top competition was and where I, where I had to beat, I think it's it's probably changed a bit since the last time. I have a new respect for the girls in the competition. I've I've actually come to realise that they 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 have uh, quite quite a few attributes to bring to the party, and, they, and they're quite strong. So if today it, it might change slightly. I think that Chris is, Chris is still he's, he's still a very strong competitor and, 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 and one I'd need to beat. And then I'd probably say that Alicia would be you know, one of the girls that I think is, is another strong competitor and, and one that could, could run away with this competition. If I had to answer, I thought I had no chance in this competition. And it's solely based on the task that we did and, and whether I feel it's on, on a strength basis and, and winning the competition, I'd have to say Selena. The people who were really leading the pack in the first two tasks are falling a bit behind in the last two tasks, and whereas the ones who were in who were not so great in the first two tasks are really picking up uh, speed. In the first two tasks, I was very impressed with with Andre uh, as well as Alicia in terms of their performances and how uh, they held themselves in the teams. However, I think he's actually taken his, his, his foot off the pedal a little bit. Selena is actually picking up quite nicely in the, in the competition. She, I don't think she's the leader yet, but I do think that as more and more presentations and opportunities come up, uh, she's doing much better. Garabo today really, really shown out. He really stood out. He did very well. I don't think Unati did very well in this particular task. Uh, I think that he left his team behind during the both the presentations and the preparations. Chris, um, I think he did quite well today. For my side, I think he showed good leadership during the, the preparations where he, he, he also had his own tasks that he had to handle. Um.
Apprentices, we're here to announce the winner of today's uh, competition. I would like for you to start. Thank you, Josh Theo. Uh, good afternoon, apprentices. Okay. Just be careful of the difference between uh, speaker notes and a presentation. Andre, um, this is particularly addressed to you as well because you were reading verbatim what you had written there, and as judges, we can read. Karabo, today, um, I'd say that you were simply outstanding. Chris, um, I thought that you showed good leadership in the way you handled the, the section in the executive summary where you know you actually stopped and then said let's confer with your team. My caution is that you be very careful of your body language and your tone. I think that sometimes you come across as aggressive and arrogant. Okay, now Justin, let me start with uh, resilient risk surveyors. Um, so as a start, I think that your presentation of your survey report was extremely professional and well presented in the document. Um, I think you took some initiative um, in taking photos. I think, Alicia, I think you probably played quite a role in doing that work. Maybe one thing, you, you're quite strong, you need to balance it sometimes, but I think that certainly contributed to your team's success. Renati, I think you showed incredible leadership and technical skills um, during the survey. I think in the presentation, you came across a little bit too dominant at times. Selena, I think you did really well at a time when you were your team was flustering a bit and a bit flustered because of Roger asking some technical questions. I think you did really well to pull it back all together and summarize. Um, and I think you're really good when you're given an opportunity. I think the challenge to you is this is a game that's going to get competitive now at the end. Um, and you know you need to sometimes be stronger. In terms of the technical aspects of the survey, I think you did really well overall. Um, you missed three of the key requirements that we were looking for. A three out of nine is not a train smash. Hashtag risk must fall. Um, I think your executive summary, I think again you struggled a bit there, Andre. If anything in your um, survey, I think you're very comprehensive, you were very detailed, I think you did well in, in covering most of the risk. You only missed um, one of the, the requirements that we were looking for. I think the challenge with being comprehensive in risk management is at some t stages there was there was maybe a little bit of overkill. Okay, guys. So um, bring us to the brings us to the to the, the task of actually announcing the winners. I would suppose mostly for the fact that more of the uh, the risks that were identified by Hollow were covered by the one team. It is Team Risk Must Fall that is, that are the winners today. So Andre, Carabo, and Chris, well done. Um, I'd like to thank Justin, Naila, and Hollard and your team that were here. Thank you very much. You're dismissed.